In this video we're going to show you how to service a 3Y30 series engine from Myanmar. We're going to cover quite a few things which also relate to the 3Y20 and the 2Y15. The first of these videos will be on oil and air and we'll do this in 10 easy steps. So stay with us and enjoy the video. This one is the same, so this is the air filter and uh, the engine has ingested the air filter. Again, uh, not from Impavidus. We're back on White Cat, and today we're going to do uh, service on both of the Yanmar engines, and they are this type here. Um, and Peter's got uh, two of these genuine uh, service kits for sailboat engines. Good heavens! This is a genuine. Yanmar oil filter, quite tiny. Um, we will write the date on the top of that and the engine hours so that uh, the next person along will know exactly when it's done. And I think today we'll start with the uh, we'll start with the oil. Okay, covers are off the engine. Let's push that to on. Glow. One, two, three, four, five. That's that one. Same again. Start on. One, two, three, four, five. Let's give them a little bit of so I've just started the engines both of them just just over tick over and then in a minute I'll uh, put them in gear once all the oils up around the head around the tappets through all the galleries both in gear both about the same RPM I'm going to leave those for 10-15 minutes just to uh, just to warm the oil up there we go 20 minutes later 20 minutes later we can uh, just stop the engines and turn them both off and we're now going to leave the engines to stand for three or four minutes allow all the oil to drain down into the sump or pan. A quick google of oil filter removing tools will show you that there's a myriad of them available on the net. Let's look at two that we have on board Peter's boat. One of which is the one I prefer to use. So, two types of uh, oil filter remover. There's this type now this goes on the end of a socket wrench and you can see it uh, closes up as you undo it so they, they fit just about any size the only restriction with them is sometimes you can't get them in because there's not enough room to put the ratchet on the end here and turn it or get it in you can get an extension on you know but sometimes you're restricted by space these are the ones i prefer this is the one i've got um and this is literally a cheap piece of plastic or not so cheap piece of plastic a rubber strap um, you set the length of strap to go around the oil filter and uh off it comes. I'll put a link uh, in the description to our website and then on our website I'll put uh, put a link where you can buy one of these. The next thing to do is to isolate the engine from its battery. 
should you drop a spanner or wrench on the engine across any electrical terminals, you won't then cause a spark and potentially damage the electric circuits of your engine. OK, we're down in the engine bay now, and as I said earlier, this is the 3Y M30 Yamaha. Just to prove it is, there's the plate. Now, from memory, the dipstick is down the front here, so there it is. So that's the dipstick, there's an oil filler hole there. I've just got a piece of rag with me so that uh, as I pull things around, um, I don't flick any muck or dirt into any orifices. So the oil filter is down there on the side of the engine. You can see that there. No date on there, look. Yeah, raw water pumps on the front there. You can see that there. There's of course the, uh, that's going to be a bit tricky to get at. They usually are on these. And uh, yeah, oil there. So let's uh, whiz the dipstick out and start sucking some of that nice hot oil out. It's now time to remove the old oil via the dipstick hole. Now we actually prefer this type of oil removal pump, although in this video at first we're using an electric one that promptly failed. And once again I'll put a link on our website shop as to where you can buy one of this type of oil extraction pumps. Two hours later, let's just um, show you. Yeah, that looks like it's uh, ingested its own filter. At this point, you should clean or replace the air filter depending on its age. Now this Yanmar engine has an air filter box which actually works as an induction noise suppressor as well. In other words it makes the engine quieter. You don't hear the induction noise so badly and it's located here on the top of the engine. And normally you would just take this filter out and wash it off. But over time there is a known problem with this type of filter and that is that the foam degrades. Not changing this filter on a regular basis, or at least not inspecting it on a regular basis, will mean the engine will ingest the filter. If you have a foam and gauze type filter like this one, check it next time you're on your boat. Removing the oil through the dipstick hole means that not all of the oil is removed from the sump or oil pan. More on that in a minute. It's now time to check the oil filler cap or caps. So again, just taking the uh, oil filler cap off. There's actually two on these engines. Um, don't ask me why, but my Perkins is the same. Just looking for moisture in the cap, which goes like mayonnaise, salad cream. This one's clean and tidy. If you do find a bit of mayo in the oil cap, then it may be that the cylinder head gasket has failed. It could be just engine condensation from little use or short runs. It could be a cracked cylinder head. Or it can be that the crankcase breather is blocked or the filter needs changing. Some engines have a flame trap filter. This is located in the crankcase breather line but you should investigate. You could do some serious engine damage by just leaving it. I'm just going to pour a little oil in here to flush it down. Could really do with a... Putting clean oil into the engine flushes dirty oil into the sump. You can then remove it with your pump. There we go. That's the end of that one. So that's about, I don't know, a quarter of a litre, I guess. 
oil, clean oil. And that is just going to work its way down the engine. Actually going back to Peter's pump because mine one, the motor's just burnt out. Up there, just suck that last little bit out. And it's still sucking. So actually it isn't sucking. Um, now here's a bit of physics for you. These things remove the air from inside this bowl. And air pressure is pushing down on the oil in the sump, on you, on me, on this piece of wood. Air pressure, 15 psi, constantly pushing. So what's actually happen, happening is when you remove the air from inside here, you create a vacuum. The air pushing down, air pressure, then pushes that oil up out of the sump and into here to take up the space which is created by the vacuum. So it's not actually sucking the oil out, the oil is being pushed out by air pressure. Yeah. As with the old kiddies trick, you know, where you turn a glass of water upside down with a sheet of paper on the bottom, the air pressure is actually pushing the paper up. Well, that's how these uh, oil pumps work. It's the air that's pushing the oil into the vessel, not the other way around. 14.7 pounds at sea level is what air pressure is, one bar. There you go. Most of you know that anyway, I guess. <laughs> So there we go. Okay, well I'm hoping you can see better with that camera in that position. What I'm actually going to do is put this yogurt pot under here. I'm going to take an old screwdriver and just pierce the end of this. Because the last one I did, lots of oil came out. And uh, I spent a good 30 minutes cleaning it up. So, I said so, didn't I? Of course, again, you've got to put one in the top to allow the oil to come out the bottom. Still coming out, and that would have all gone under the engine. So, top tip, top tip. Bash the hole in the bottom of the oil filter, bash the hole in the top. Don't need to go in more than a quarter of an inch, just to make a hole. And uh, that allows all that oil that's behind the oil filter. And the bottom hole, you want to do it as low as you can. And it's now starting to drip. I'm guessing we've got half a cup full in there. Now you're still going to have oil coming out of this filter when you uh, when you take it off, but it's going to be a lot less severe. And while that's doing that, I'm going to grab a new oil filter, a new oil filter on this engine. It's part number one one nine three zero five dash three five one seven zero. And as I said the other day, most of this stuff is all made in China. 
all made by the same manufacturer, just different labels on, and then to prove it, look, all in Chinese. Okay, so I said so again, didn't I? I'm gonna get T-shirts made with so. That down there. There's our old filter. Still loads of goop coming out. That's the oil filter off. We've got a new filter. The one I prepared earlier. Drop of oil around the top there. Just to stop that O-ring rolling out position. Of course, if your oil filter is mounted that way, you can fill it up and put it on. These are not get this on there fairly quickly and literally just past hand tight no more uh, there we go always looks worse than it is the last thing I do will be I'll probably stamp them out on my um, little brother printer and that's put the date and the engine hours on the end there a little sticker or if you haven't got one of those brother printers you can um, you can always write it on there with an indelible pen and then the next person that comes along and does service because it might not be you will know exactly when it was last done I haven't got a look at that look temperature sender or is that oil pressure I would have to look to see we need to it's not clipping on there properly we need to uh, close that up with a pair of pliers let's fill the engine back up with oil it's now time to fill the engine to just below the top mark on the dipstick Right, you don't want to watch me filling the engine up with oil. Well, not literally filling it up, but you know, topping it up. And then that's this one done for the oil change. The next thing to do is to run the engine for a short while, maybe a few minutes, and then stop and allow the oil to settle. Check the oil level again. It should be halfway between the upper and lower marks on the dipstick. Oh, there we are running again. Um, a bit noisy because the air filter's off. It's over there in the corner, and those air filters actually uh, quieten the induction noise as well. You can hear the, the induction noise and valves closing. Pop, 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 pop. Carry on cleaning. You made the mess. <laughs> um, well, a lot of this black is literally in the air. Yes. <laughs> don't know what they burn in their fires here, but the whole boat is covered in it. Look. Um, and as soon as you tread on it, it trapes it everywhere. And of course, all the blood is mine. I've got a little cut, but it's running all over the place. Um, well, that's it. The only thing we couldn't do was to change the air filters. Because it's running. Luckily, I bought a spare battery. <laughs> um, yeah, the only thing I'm not happy with is that we couldn't do the air filters. Um, because they've been ingested by the engine. So um, Peter's not an engineer, he doesn't know. Um, but the last guy that serviced the engines clearly didn't check the air filters. Um, and it's, both engines have ingested them. Now they're running fine, they're okay. Um, I suspect that the 
fine dust which was the, the rubber has just gone in, got burnt, gone out the exhaust. But there is quite a lot of black on the inside of the inlet manifold. It doesn't seem to be detrimental, they, they appear to be working. Both the uh, diesel filters are clean on both engines. So you've got the primary filter and the secondary filter. I've checked all four of those um, and they're all absolutely clean. And then when I phoned Peter last night and said it's not worth changing them, they're, you know, they're really clean. He said, oh, <laughs> I did them nine months ago in, uh, in Finicay. So that's... Uh, they're okay. Oil, um, I think we should do another oil change uh, at about 200 hours on of what we've got. The reason for that is that you can't get all of the oil out of these um, Yanmars. Not the way that you can on the on the Volvos. Um, there's always a little bit of dirty oil left in. So you you know you're adding you know clean oil to a tiny bit of dirty oil. And it's nice to have the oil nice and clean and what have you. So, but yes, they're um, they're done. They're ticking over, lovely. I've adjusted the tick overs. Um, Peter, <coughs> oh, excuse me. Peter was um, saying that the uh, the tick overs didn't uh, match properly, and uh, one engine was running just slightly faster. So, just check that tick overs are wrong I'll have to adjust it again when the new air filter's going but other than that yeah jobs are good um, I'll do a I'll do a list um, a spreadsheet what we did how we did it what the part numbers were um, and the tools that we've used the specialist tools I will put them on our website on our shop page don't forget to go to our shop page www svimpavidus.com and then go to shop easy that's it like subscribe hit the bell tell your friends share that's it mate in the next video we'll be looking at the raw water pump and how to service that okay we have our new o-ring for the faceplate. We have the faceplate which I've cleaned up a little bit. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to visit our website www.svimpavidus.com. Until next time, sail, sail safe. safe.